the original group, um, he's, he's kind of like a, a crazy gone gangsterism, really. Um, he's the Emperor of Rome, so in this, I'm like a bad man to, to own a Cardiff nightclub called Rome. Um, it's kind of like, um, uh, uh, like how, you know, privilege at that time um, was, was kind of like gangsterism, as it is now. You know, the people we have in power now are just gangsters and eating, eating axes, really. Um, and I quite like the, I quite like the notion that, that Hemingway said, um, you know, uh, tell a dream and lose a reader. Um, but I was allowed to tell dreams because I'd chosen the dream one. <laughs> so I, I was kind of saying, you know, bollocks you, Ernest. Um, you know, you, you don't great things, but you start to shoot um, large animals to prove that you, you had a big, big dick. <laughs> <laughs> so in this one, um, um, there's, this, there's this kind of Cardiff gangster, but he, he's got a kind of having some mental kind of trauma um, and, he see, and he, he has a dream about a woman and he sees the woman on his head and he says she's the one and, he, and his, 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 his men, his boys, one of them is called 13 um, and they find out that she's, she's, um, she's going to be in, in this film that is being filmed in North Wales so he sends his, his men um, to, to, to find this film in North Wales and they find out that, um, that uh, there's this party in one of the hotels so that's where they go Thirteen laughs and shake their, shakes their hands and buys more beer and then more beer and the afternoon fades in pints and pool and then the lads must go to prepare for their night of work and after nightfall Thirteen and his men follow the given directions to a huge white house all lit up in the middle of a meadow in the middle of a wood and surrounded by the types of automobiles which they all long. Much noise comes from inside the house, music and laughter. Bright lights are thrown by the windows of the slanting rhomboids on the neat green lawn. Thirteen nods and winks to two lads on the door, now in a smart black suit, who nod and wink and grin back at him, and thirteen hands them each a small package, a tiny envelope wrapped in cellophane, which they gratefully accept in pockets, and thirteen leads his men to a well-lit and gorgeous clamour. Some of his men pounce on the table of food, some of them make it a punch bowl at the bar, others just stand and stare at the gog, and one accompanies thirteen to what looks like a ballroom, chandelier suspended with a million people on a gleaming parquet flooring, and he nudges thirteen in the ribs with his elbow and points and says, Hey! And 13 follows his pointing finger and his eyes narrow and he nods his head slowly and thinks, Jesus fucking Christ, and he says, fuck me man, yes, well spotted. They mill and mingle and drink all the time keeping a woman in their sight. She hears an album of moments of 13's past. Her hair reminds him of chocolate mousses his mother would buy him as a treat if he'd been good. The shoulder straps of her white dress were called single strands of the tin spaghetti he'd have on toast. And the breast that those straps sustained hoisted suggesting the round and brown and gleaming horse chestnuts he'd reveal when he broke open the spiked carapace of a conquer. He can't keep his eyes off her. Past midnight, when he feels like he's drunk to keep his tongue stable and safe and tripping over itself, because he's not very good with women, hour 13. And the woman is alone with the punch bowl, he approaches her, pound signs in one of his eyes, and her face in the other. Jesus Christ, her face. Hello, he says, and within a few minutes he's learned from her that the film being made is based on some old national poem or something, that she's just an extra on it, but there's a speaking part in that, far from him in Hollywood, even America, who's born and still lives in the town of the castle and the marina. Thirteen has discovered, too, that friendliness need necessarily be seen as a sign of weakness, and that this woman's most beautiful woman has ever seen, and that the pounds she has put in him, part pain and part joy, he could only relate to the pitiful bleatings of some bevested and herd old prick he'd seen last week, giving all sort of gestures on the x factor as he sang a banal and stupid and pointless song about the book. <laughs>